And I, I would love to come on the air and say uh, we've got good news. Unfortunately, we don't have good news, and it's on several fronts that we don't have good news. Uh, first off, let's start off with what is going on in the advisory. Here it is. Winds now up to 80 miles an hour. So Dorian, which uh, started strengthening last night, has continued this strengthening trend. It became a hurricane as of 2 o'clock this afternoon, made landfall in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and is now northwest of St. Thomas, moving away at around 14 miles an hour. Category 1, but the anticipation is that it will strengthen and just popping up there. That is the size of the storm. It's still a little bit lopsided in terms of, in terms of its wind field. That's good news for Puerto Rico, though, because the worst of the weather is north and east of it. But this still a relatively small storm. It's going to grow a bit in size, but it's expected to grow quite a bit in intensity. Now, here's the future track, and this is new. This is updated. 5 a.m., 11 a.m., 5 p.m., 11 p.m. That's when the track itself changes. And the forecast is for continued intensification. Here's tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow night, forecast to be category two. And then something critical happens because if you were to say, just keep extrapolating this, well, that's not so bad. It's moving to the north, northwest, or northwest at a pretty good clip. But it makes a turn. That turn is going to take place on Friday, and while it's making the turn, it's going to continue to grow strong, becoming a major hurricane Saturday afternoon off here. The big question is going to be how sharp of a turn does it make and when does it start that turn? Obviously, if it waits and makes a very slow turn, the center is going to be on the northern side of the cone there, and we'd be feeling better here in South Florida. But if it makes a sharp turn or a sooner turn, all of a sudden it's not as far north as we would like it has a greater potential to come to South Florida. In fact, the cone itself, these are the Hurricane Center's forecast points, have shifted south this afternoon, and that's in keeping with what the models did today. They also came to the south. So all of South Florida in the cone of uncertainty. And remember, the cone only tracks where the center is expected to be, and that only two-thirds of the time. So all of the Florida peninsula remains under the threat of a major hurricane. What's going on in the atmosphere that's changed today? Well, not a lot. A little bit of one of the things that showed up between the two blocking highs here, it's this break in the block, this little upper level low. It looks like now it's going to get out of the way a little more quickly, and that may give the opportunity for Dorian to go to the west. It would just travel to the northwest like that, but this big blocking high is building to the west there. As it comes to the west, there's that opportunity now for Dorian to get pushed to the left towards the west over time. And that blocking high, as long as it stays there, is going to keep Dorian trying to go to the west. Now, this could change a little bit, but we, we're going to have to really watch this, especially because the models flipped back. There was no consistent trend of the models going to the north. There's the close-up radar out of San Juan. You can see Dorian looking more impressive with each uh, radar loop there. There is the visible satellite loop, and you can see Dorian, a compact storm there, and trying to form the hints of maybe an eye. So here's our timeline. Tomorrow we're still going to be checking our uh, after the storm hurricane kit, the things that we'll need after the storm, maybe even during the storm if it includes flashlights, batteries, things like that. Friday, we're watching for that turn toward Florida, and I think Friday is also a good time to check shutters. Saturday, if it is coming here, will be our final day for preparations. One